My name is Natalia Khan. Thank you all very much for having us here today. The names of our other group members are the following. Roberto, Andreas Norvik, Andreas Evjent, Otto, Iselin, Andreas Flåten, Joachim, Martin, Håkon and Kasper. Håkon and Kasper unfortunately could not be here with us today because they're in Tampa in Florida to present this very same project at an engineering conference. So they're representing all of us over there. Meanwhile, I'll take this part. Allow me now to start by giving you a very brief introduction to the history of the discipline of dynamics, okay? We'll start with Galileo. Galileo championed a heliocentric view of the solar system, advancing the sun as an origin. He formulated the principle of Galilean relativity, arguing that we don't know who or what is at rest. Isaac Newton formulated the law of particle motion. He equipped it with the calculus of change, and he privileged the sun as an inertial frame. Now, let me explain what an inertial frame is. Picture me sitting in a car, okay? I'm trying to play billiard in that car. Not very easy because this particular car is accelerating, making it very difficult for me to hit the ball where I want it and score the amount of points that I want. Look at the picture up on the slide. The train in question is not accelerating, it's standing still. The inertial observer who's looking at that pendulum inside of the train is also standing still. She's not accelerating. So the frame here in question is inertial because it's not accelerating. It's not just about not moving. It can move, but it can move with, an, with a velocity that's not changing. It's not accelerating. That's an inertial frame when you consider a frame where the velocity of the frame is either standing completely still or it's not accelerating. Leonard Euler extended Newton's law to model the rotations of bodies, but he retained that inertial frame. And then the Industrial Revolution dawned. You have steam engines, lathes, sewing machines. These were all simple machines rotating in a plane, often two-dimensional, and they were all viewed from the privilege of an adjacent inertial observer. So let's summarize the discipline thus far. The emphasis is on the inertial frame as the formative element. The focus is on 2D motion. The math is all vectors and cross product. It's not associative. And the solutions, they're accompanied by whimsical interventions. So now the premise of this moving frame method, which is the method that we use for our projects, is that students who cannot internally visualize will stumble. The engineers who put robots on Mars, they were geniuses. But they used an inferior math of vector algebra. So if they had modernized the math, they would have invited a more diverse community of students to participate in engineering. Modernizing the math, making this much simpler for students, is how you take this and advance it to be the lifelong learning process that it very easily can be. So allow me now to give you a brief introduction to the mathematical history. Our very own Sufusli, a Norwegian, hey, developed the theory of continuous symmetry groups. The moving frame method adopts the idea of rotation matrices instead of vectors, because vectors are not preferable when you're modeling rotations in 3D. Elie Carton assigned a moving frame to each body. The moving frame method extends Carton's idea by placing a moving frame of reference on every moving link. Then there's Theodore Frankel. Theodore Frankel proposed a new notation for geometrical physics. Now, a fun fact is that Theodore Frankel was the doctoral advisor to Hidenori Murakami, who is one of the developers of the moving frame method. Dr. Murakami, in turn, was the doctoral advisor to our advisor on these projects, Dr. Impeluso. 
So in Lie group theory of SO3, as it's called, we consider a rotating body with a frame of its own. We consider another frame, an inertial frame of reference. We can relate the two to each other by something called a rotation matrix. This is the time rate of the frame in which we insert something called orthogonality. The angular velocity matrix, or as we would say in Norwegian, vinkelhastighetsmatrisen, identifies a moving angular velocity vector. So let's take this a step further and look at this another way. We consider two bodies. Each body has a frame of its own, the red frame and the blue frame. We also consider an inertial frame of reference, which is that yellow frame. So what we can do here is that we can take the red frame of the first body and we can relate it to that yellow inertial frame by a rotation matrix. We can take that second body with the blue frame and we can relate it to the first body with the red frame with a rotation matrix. There we go. And we can also take the second body with the blue frame and relate it all the way back to the inertial frame, which is that yellow frame. So below here you see a general expression for the relation of frames to each other. For particles, finding the linear velocity and acceleration, we use the methods and notation from the previous slides. And we end up with this for the acceleration. Yep. Uh, yeah. This is the centripetal acceleration. This is the angular acceleration. This is the Coriolis acceleration, which, fun fact, is what causes hurricanes to spin. And this is the linear acceleration. The old method is that top equation. That's confusing to students. I know you're thinking they're both confusing. Yeah, I get it. But the top method is confusing to students because it uses vector algebra. And as a student, that's tricky because you cannot associate it with anything. The new method relates it all to a frame, which is what we have there. We can picture a frame, a location. It is associative to us as students. Considering the kinetics, these are the expression for force and moment about a connection point O, which is relevant for robotics. And these are the expressions about center of mass point C which is relevant for free bodies. In advanced dynamics, we consider the special Euclidean group SE3, providing a generic representative of the frame. We take linked systems into consideration. The principle of virtual work is redefined from something called Hamilton's principle as the following. What we do then is that we extract the generalized angular velocities. Uh, this here, ladies and gentlemen, is the beating heart of the moving frame method for robotics. Because what we see here is that we need the variation of the angular velocity. We find that it's a function of an expression for the change in angles plus the change in the frame. This is what's missing from traditional dynamics and this is the achievement of Dr. Murakami. The coordinates are the following. I will explain what some of these mean a little later. This is the common solution from the calculus of variations. This was a difficult part of the project to us as students because getting to this took quite a bit of work. But then we found that we were not out of the woods yet because what we had to do then was to rotate the boat. This line here expresses the time rate of the coordinate frame. This shows that R dotted is equal to the rotation matrix times the skew symmetric angular velocity matrix. This third statement here is true only if omega is constant. In our problems, omega was not constant. This fourth statement here states that between the individual time steps of a method we use called Ranjakata, I won't go too much into that, 
but it states that between the individual time steps of Ranjakata, omega is constant. So that's an assumption we made, that omega was constant, even though it was not. Finally, here we formally turn to something called the Rodriguez of an exponential of a matrix. We used WebGL for our projects as well. WebGL is interface for rendering 3D graphics within any web browser without the use of plugins. It's integrated completely into uh, the web standards of all browsers. So we're talking Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Internet Explorer, all of them. WebGL runs on cell phones. And the web is poised to go 3D. So for this project, we learned WebGL coding. Coding in general was a very essential part of our project. We coded in MATLAB to extract the equations that were specific to our project. And we coded in JavaScript to create the web pages that were specific to our projects. So now, finally, uh, we've covered history very briefly and mathematics very briefly. We can begin to introduce the first project, which investigated how the motion of a crane on a ship affects the motion of the ship itself. This project was conducted by Roberto, Andreas Norvik, and myself. So the rolling of offshore systems induced by ocean waves results in undesirable motion. Some companies lower an object into the sea through moon pools. Water will not enter the vessel because it's contained inside the moon pool's walls. But a moon pool, as an opening in the floor or base of the ship, introduces stress concentrations in that hull. So cranes are preferred. But then again, the crane on ships causes ship motion. So our research began to address this issue. Here's a quick look at our ship. These are the system generalized velocities, which I showed briefly earlier. They represent the velocity and angular velocity vectors of the three moving frames that we operated with. These are the essential generalized velocities, which in this project represented the translational velocity of the ship, the angular velocity of the ship, the rotational velocity of the crane, and the rotational velocity of the boom. So here's the first frame. That's the second frame. Here we have the third frame. The second project studied and analyzed the induced motions on an ROV due to movement of its manipulator arms. This project was conducted by Andreas Avient, Otto, and Iselin. The rolling of a subsea craft is, again, undesirable motion. In subsea operations, an ROV is exposed to currents, buoyancy, and waves. Also, motion of the manipulator can cause the ROV to rotate when you have heavy tools attached to it. These movements can cause a risk for the subsea operations. So today, the way these challenges are being addressed is by using human pilots who continuously correct the position and the rotation of that ROV. But the question asked in this project was, can this be automated? So here's a quick look at the ROV. These are the system generalized velocities, which again represent the velocity and angular velocity vectors of the three frames. These are the essential generalized velocities. That's the first frame, the second frame, and the third frame. Over to the third project, which studied and analyzed the use of active gyroscopic stabilizers on small crafts. This project was conducted by Andreas Flotten, Joachim, Martin, Håkon, and Kaspar. The aquaculture industry also has a problem with undesirable motion. The offshore industry suffers when wind presents itself as a hurdle. So gyroscopes have this immense power of reducing these motions, functioning as stabilizers. But how does one proceed to build this model, was one of the questions asked. Now, 
the thing about this project is that they had more frames than the two other projects did, so I'm not going to show you those frames because we don't think it's suitable for this type of presentation. So what I'd rather do is move on to the fourth project, which was an experimental validation of that third project. The guys did the theoretical part, of course, as the rest of us, but they also had a practical aspect to their project. It was conducted by Andreas Flotten, Joachim, Martin, Håkon, and Kaspar. And they utilized a wave tank we have at Høyskol på Vastlande to look at a ship's motion while having gyroscopes attached to it. There are computers that are connected to these wave tanks, and what they do is that they measure the movement and the behavior of the ship. This allowed the guys to match up those theoretical results obtained in project three with these some practical results in project four. Okay, so uh, this was quite the team effort. Uh, there was a lot to do. We had about four to five months to do all of it. So what we did, a quick summary, is that we built the CAD model. We extracted the equations of motion. We created a 3D web page. We coded in MATLAB to get the equations. We coded those equations in JavaScript. And all of the above was done from Flure, Bargen, and Ströme. So we figured quite early on that we had to make it a priority to divide these tasks as equally among us as we could. So in one group, for instance, you had one person taking the main responsibility for the JavaScript coding, one person taking the main responsibility for the MATLAB coding, and so on. OK, so after this, I have two more slides. Uh, I just want to summarize this bit with a quote from Isaac Newton. If I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. So stay with me for a moment. Just a little fun part here. Yeah. Uh, a few more things to say. On a more serious note, we would like to make it clear that these projects would have been practically impossible without the use of the moving frame method. It is eye-opening, it is extremely enabling for us as students. And what this project also has done is that it has stimulated our desire to pursue lifelong learning, which I know is something FLT promotes very eagerly. So, should you be interested in viewing our bachelor reports and the 3D animated web pages, they are open for everybody. The link is what you see here behind me. Please visit the following site. You can find all of them there. And finally, I would like to invite the team members who are here today up onto the stage. Roberto, Andreas, Andreas, Otto, Iselin, Andreas, Joachim, and Martin, please join me on stage. And once I'm done with this part, I have one more thing to say, and after that, I promise I'll shut up. Just wait for them to come up. Okay, so on behalf of all of us here, and as well as Huokon and Kaspar, who are in Florida representing us down there, uh, we have some people we would like to thank. First of all, our supervisor on these projects, Dr. Thomas Impeluso. He's sitting right there. Thank you for your guidance. <laughs> A big thank you also to Heyskul på Vastlande, Thank you for our education. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to work with something we found exhilarating, fun, extremely exciting. And finally, of course, thank you to Forbund for Ledelse og Teknik, FLT, for this honor. Thank you for recognizing our work. It means a great deal to us. Uh, and we're very honored to have been found suitable as a candidate who exemplifies the lifelong learning mission that Magnus Smithbo had. Tusen hjertelig takk.